Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. I am here with Sarah from Uden and Sons Funeral Home over in England. Um, they have how many locations, Sarah, around London? We have seven. Seven locations. One of, I mean, I'm kind of preferential and think you guys are just the best thing ever, I think, because I came and worked with you guys for a couple of days, but um, pretty classy establishment you have, but you guys have been throwing a million queen questions at me. So I figured, why don't we actually talk to someone in the country that her funeral is going on and get Sarah's input on a lot of what's happening. So I think the biggest, I mean, give us a little input, what it is like there for you right now, being in the midst of this epic event going on so it's it's very um sh it's very strange because we've a lot of people we've never experienced anything like like this happening before a monarch passing away so we always sort of knew that it was it was it was coming it was going to be soon but no one really knows what's going to happen when the time does come so from um, last Thursday, so a week ago, um, the TV channels, they, they stop all their programming. So it is literally just um, news readers and TV programs about the Queen. The radio stations, they play uh, softer music, somber music, mm. all over all radio stations. Um, a lot of people wear black. A lot of people are um, changing their sort of shop windows to um, sort of black clothing. And um, yeah, it's quiet. And the, and the children are going to school and they're sort of learning about it. And they're, they're holding special assemblies and being told, you know, this is what's happened. And then there's a lot of questions then that get asked around that with, with children. Um, but then there's also, we, I took um, my daughter to um, Buckingham Palace to Green Park to lay some flowers on Sunday. And it's also a very um, lovely place to be and everyone's hello and how are you? And we laid some flowers by a tree and there was a, a couple of ladies and just chatting, didn't know them, but just come over, started talking, reading all the messages together. So it's very, everyone's very together, I think. I, I had not thought of this question, but as you're talking and thinking of what a grand, you know, it's such a grand funeral. One of the largest funerals ever in history was Princess Diana when she died. And uh, can you, I mean, kind of talk about the two. I mean, we've got a 96 year old monarch. It was her time, you know, her time, but then you had this young tragic death, but in the grand scheme, does it feel as magnanimous maybe as when she died or can you kind of relate the two at all? Yeah, it definitely, it definitely does. It, it it's, it's the same sort of magnitude. It's the same um, people want to feel and feel that they need to be there. They need to be closer to, um, obviously, Princess Diana. Um, she lived in St. James's Palace, which is just down the road from Buckingham Palace. So a lot of the flowers and the tributes were laid out there. And people did feel that they, they should go and they should be there. And that's what people do. With um, Princess Diana, it was more of a shock. So, and obviously her young age as well. So it was very, very sad. I remember going, I was um, 15, 16, mm. and very sad. Everyone was very sad. This time, it, it's not as sad. It's more, um, not it, every, everyone sort of could, knew, knew that it would be soon and everyone's just more thankful for her, the, for the Queen and for what she gave us and for what she did for us. So it's a lot of sort of thanks and um, happy memories. Whereas with Princess Diana, it, it was just very sad and very shocking. Now, the Queen died in Scotland. 
and she laid out in Scotland for a while, correct? And has now come back to England to be laid out here and lay in state. If she had died in England, would she have gone to Scotland for a time or would she have just stayed in England the whole time? No, she would have just stayed in England. Yeah. Yeah. She would have. Um, yeah. So she would have just stayed in England. She would have just been at Buckingham Palace and then she would have been taken the same as she has now to Westminster Hall to lay in, lay in state there. So. So, yeah, no, she wouldn't. I don't think they would have taken her to Scotland yet. So it was kind of an added level because yeah. of where she died. Yeah. So I think they had um, protocols and plans in place if she was at um, Windsor Castle, if she passed away there. And then they had a plan in place if she did pass away at, at Balmoral um, in, in Scotland. So... So yeah, I think they had their contingency plans depending on sort of where she was, but. There had to have been like the largest binder ever with every protocol for every situation, like the queen's death, here's your binder. This is Mm. what's going to happen because at 96, I mean, it's been, it could have been any time in the last years. Yeah. And plans change as well at that time. So from what we understand is that because she did pass away in Scotland, what they was planning to do was um, she was going to go on the train. So she was going to go on the Royal train from Scotland to London, back to London. But they then decided the, to, to fly, to put her on the um, RAF plane and fly her back, back into London. So um, yeah, I think the plans change in sort of as yeah. things are, are coming to light and things, yeah. Is there like a royal funeral person, like when someone dies within the royal family, is there like one person or do they go to the funeral home and the funeral home kind of dictates anything or is there somebody on staff that that's who, what they do? Yeah. So, yeah. So there's, there's, um, the queen, I believe her, the person that looks up, that look, has been looking after her funeral, I think he, it's the, the Duke of Norfolk. Um, and he, he's the person in charge. And he always has been the person in charge of, of her, of her funeral and of her funeral plans. So, okay. Um, yeah. Now, there's been two funeral homes that have been listed as being kind of part of caring for her. Is it because of her dying? They had the William Purvis and then the Leverton and Sons. And I believe the Leverton and Sons is your local one that has kind of always cared for the royalty. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So they're based in in London. They're based in sort of North London area. So they have been used before. Um, I believe that from what we know, they're not being used this time but I'm not not 100% sure about that. And then because she passed away in Scotland, I think it was just a case of them needing a hearse to take her to Holyrood House to be to lay in state there for, for the service that she had there. So I think it was just a case of finding a local funeral director with a hearse to then, to then make her journey to, to oh the Holyrood, Holyrood House. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. And some photos, their name was on the hearse and then they made them take it off or they switched hearses so that there wasn't kind of advertisement or whatever, you know, I think that's kind of funny um, that, you know, William Purvis was like, we're going to get our name in there. Dang it. That was a bit cheeky. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But yeah, yeah shoot, shoot your shot, you know, kind That's of. It. Um, now, the big question I think everyone asks, and as we were talking kind of off camera, we may never know the answer is, is she embalmed? Was there preparation? Did she leave, you know, her home to have preparation? Would someone have come in to get her ready? What do you know about that side of it? What is the best speculation that we can find, I guess, about it? there's there's nothing there's no no word of what what happened what what has happened to her how if she was embalmed and and who does that there's you know these things are so 
with the palace kept so tightly um, secure and nobody knows except for those people that are are doing it and there's disclaimers that that disclosures and disclaimers that, that they'll have to sign to say that you know they're not allowed to go to the media and say oh we have just embalmed Queen Elizabeth or you know we've been caught there, there's all of that that in place so and I think as well some things do need to be kept private at the end of the day she's somebody's mum and and that a grandmother and I wouldn't tell all my family yeah. and friends and people that you know this is what's happened to my loved ones so then then things are sort of kept private and I think it is something that we would we will never know we will never know the answer to that so well, and she, you know, as a public figure, people, I think, feel they have the right to know information and everything. But if I was to call Uden and Sons and say, Mary Smith is over there. Did you embalm her? Or didn't you embalm her? And there is just privacy to what we do as funeral directors and caretakers of the dead. And that's going to extend to everybody that's cared for whether it's the queen or not the queen, but I think everybody just really wants to know these things. Yeah. Um, historically, cause I kind of dug in, I was like, man, I'm getting so many questions, you know, historically he decades or hundreds of years ago, they did do some kind of, you know, treatment and embalming as they called it. But then some things happened with what, um, I think it was queen Elizabeth the first, they did treatments to her body. The story says that her body exploded. Her head exploded right off her body. Come on, I, who knows, really? But then that led to Queen Victoria saying, no, I don't want any of that and wanting to go in this lead-lined coffin. Now, is this something, this coffin, that anybody can come in and go, Sarah, I want a lead-lined coffin? Can anybody yeah. request that from you? Is this something that's more common over there or is this more of a royalty thing? No, so it, it it's more of a thing. So a, a lead line or a zinc line coffin would be used if someone was being repatriated to another country or someone is being buried above ground in an above ground burial, a mausoleum, something like that. So. Um, that's when we would use a zinc lined coffin, but no, not so much a lead lined, but yeah, again, it's something with regards to her coffin and how, how it's been sealed and things like that is something again, that I don't think we will ever, there'll be speculation, but we will never know for sure. I mean, we haven't even seen pictures I could not find a single picture of her actual coffin because no. she's constantly draped. And it's so we may, in the royal standard, yeah. we may never see what her actual coffin looks like because of the draping and the adornments. Um, and it's, you know, it kind of reiterating some of the things it's made of solid Oak. It was made over 30 years ago from English Oak and the Duke of Edinburgh's his coffin was made at the same time so that they would have these matching coffins yes. and you know watching I was looking back he died really during kind of peaks of COVID and it was very sad watching some of his funeral and things that the queen sat there by herself with nobody near her and um, at his funeral and they were married over 70 years and such a sad lonely moment during all of that, that nobody could really gather together like they are now for the queen. They couldn't have that time for him. And he was just as much a front figure as she was for so many years, essentially. Yeah, they was all, you would always see them together, especially as they grew older, they would do all of their um, services and appearances they would always be together so yeah it was hard very hard to see her by herself and then also after that when she did a jubilee when she came out in a jubilee he wasn't there so so mm -hmm. yeah it was very very sad for her and I, I think she missed him because like you say they've been married for so long so yeah it was hard for her I'm sure and when he died, he was placed in a, basically a temporary 
burial. It looks like a mausoleum without any facing. It's like a gated, a little gated community for coffins. Yeah. Um, and can you tell a little about what's going to happen next and where they're going to go from there? So Queen Elizabeth will join um, the Duke of Edinburgh and he, they will be um, placed in the vault and then buried together. So he was in that situation waiting so to speak for her so it's um St George's um chapel and it's based in Windsor Castle and her father uh, King George VI is buried there her mother the Queen Mother she's buried there and the ashes of her sister Princess Margaret are there so they're all underneath and then um, once the um, committal service is finished there'll be a private I believe a private family only service on Monday evening and that's when they will both be lowered together into the uh, vault to join her parents. And it's, I think it's just really fascinating. A lot of people have said, oh my gosh, they're not inside of anything. That's why you have to have the lead line vault. And to me, like you don't use vaults, burial vaults there where that is super common here. Most cemeteries require it. And it's almost like there's a, that lead lining acts as a vault inside of the coffin. So that external vault is not really needed. That external vault here is what keeps out moisture and delays decomposition and keeps the smell in and all the things that that lead lining does there, especially if you're going into this racked storage area. And then they're going to be buried then down in the ground. And so people are like, aren't they going to smell? Aren't they going to, but it's, it's a crypt down in the ground that they're going into essentially. Correct. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was built especially for that. So yeah. And again, it's another thing that we don't have much information about. It's another thing that's sort of private to them, to their family, yeah, to their history. Well, and I think going back, everybody wants to know, but yeah, it's let them have their time. She's, she was a monarch to everyone, but she's also, I mean, that's, their grandma that's their mom that's, that's it yeah you know, it's a different relationship than the world had with her and yeah we have to honor that relationship as well but we're all super nosy so we all want to know right yeah <laughs> yeah now another big thing people have talked about is the hearse the one that's being used here or I say here where you are you know in England yeah. Um, that it was specialty made. It's a Jaguar hearse, more windows than normal, but over where you are, windowed hearses are kind of the thing. Like the body is up higher. The casket coffin is up higher and the whole thing is windows and you adorn with flowers. So that's kind of the traditional. Do you, what makes hers any really different? Do you know? Um, I'm, I'm not too sure. I know that it was um, designed by her as like she had an input into it about 10 years ago. Um, so it was built around 10 years ago. Um, like you say, it's very windowed there. You can see, you know, ev everything inside. And I'm, I'm sure that she had like lighting inside as well so like some led lighting so, so that would show show the coffin but because they always knew that she was going to be going on a procession from westminster abbey to the um st george's chapel to be buried and it's it's for she's i think she did it for um people to to be able to stand out and see her and pay their respects. So, mm -hmm. and the amount of people that have done that, that have been outside and seen, seen her in her coffin, and there's just pictures everywhere mm -hmm. of her, of the hearse with the coffin and the, the royal standard draped on the hearse. And you can see everything, the flowers, everything. So yeah, I think she, she designed that in with, people knowing that people would want to see her through the sh through London 
through the, you know, on the way to the chapel. So I think she had that in mind. Can you imagine, like, Queen, today your agenda consists of meeting with Jaguar to design your hearse for the day you die. Like, that was something someone said to her one day, yeah. 10 years ago. Like, that's just wild. Yeah. But, and I've had people comment, you know, it's so vain that she had a hearse that showed as much as it did. But like you said, it really was probably more likely because of her personality with the public more so that she could allow as many people to see what they could as possible. Yeah. Everyone always wanted to, to get, have a glimpse of her to meet when she did her an opening of train stations and schools and things like that. Everybody went, everybody wanted to see a glimpse of her and, you know, to meet her. So she, and she knew that as well. I'm assuming she knew, knew that as well. So, you know, and I think if it wasn't, if the house wasn't designed that way, if it didn't have as many uh, windows and you couldn't see as much, people would would be, oh, that that's a shame. You know, we yeah. didn't see it. And as it did go along, um, because it um, when she was on the flight from Scotland, it, it landed in a place in London. So just outside, so it was about sort of 40 minute drive from the airport to Buckingham Palace. And the whole way, motorways, bridges, side roads, if, if there was people everywhere to, to see that. And it was just amazing. People went out and she obviously knew that that's what was going to happen. So mm. she gave us what we wanted. And her funeral will be Monday and she will not be in the hearse. She'll be on a um, horse drawn it's a, a gun carriage. Yes, a gun carriage is what they call it. And it's going to be pulled by the Navy. Mm, yes. So you may have seen um, before she was taken to um, Westminster Palace, she was um, taken on the gun carriage and it was pulled by, by horses. So um, it was the Queen's Guards and the um, royal family walked behind this time it will be when she leaves um, Westminster Palace and goes to Westminster Abbey, it will be pulled by um, the Navy. This was because um, in Queen Victoria's funeral, she did the same. So she was placed onto the gun carriage and the horses um, bolted. They, they went. So the Navy stepped in and they pulled the gun carriage with Queen Victoria on to the to where she where the rest of the funeral was, um, and that has now been a tradition for a royal when that when that happens. So they're they're avoiding horse issues. <laughs> yeah, and that's the <laughs> point. <doing>. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I read, and I don't, I can't, don't quote me, but like ninety military, you know, navy personnel will be pulling like the people that are participating in all this like how epic for them the yeah. hearse driver I was watching the hearse driver the other day and I was like what is that man thinking like yeah oh my gosh don't crash don't go too fast. <laughs> don't go too slow I am driving the queen currently yeah. through the town I like what a magnitude of a moment for some of the personnel that are taking part in these things. Yeah. It's yeah. Um, unreal. And, and always obviously something that, you know, how amazing for them because it's something that they can then pass on to their children, to their grandchildren. The kids yeah. can go to school and say, that was my uncle, my dad, or, you know, so it's, it's amazing. It's amazing for them. Then people in the funeral industry, in the funeral services that have been asked to come in, in, in to help. And I think what they've probably had to do is just go, it's just what I do every day. And right. <laughs> I'm professional and I just have to go from A to B in the way that I usually do. And, and then think about how important it was afterwards. Right. Because otherwise there might have been a little bit of dodgy driving <laughs> the way. I saw, and I can't remember where she was being moved from in the hearse the one time I was watching a little clip. And as the hearse was pulling out, I was like, there's nobody in front of it. 
where is the top hat person? Yeah. I was like, Matthew, they need you. Like, where are you? And yeah, your you're up. Hat? You're on. <laughs> I know. <laughs> He's probably sitting there waiting, like maybe, waiting. They don't yeah. call. <laughs> maybe they will call me. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Now at one last thing is the big discussion is, um, how long, you know, it's only, it's really not that long. It's only 11 days from her death till the funeral next Monday. Everybody discussed, oh my gosh, it's so long. How can she be in there for so long? Is she really in there? All these questions, but honestly, what is an average duration from death till burial in England? It depends. So you average would probably be three weeks. So yeah, two, two to three weeks. So yeah. So she's ahead of schedule. Yeah. So yeah, she is. Yeah. She is ahead of schedule in other countries, say Ireland, it's done within the burial takes place or the cremation takes place within two days. So every, you know, obviously country and, and every, everyone's different, but, but here, yeah, it's, it's probably about sort of two to three weeks. So yeah. So the 11 days is really not that wild here. It would be, I mean, that would be long unless the family was choosing to delay for some reason. I mean, wow, here, okay. burial happens within, you know, three, four days. Wow. Yeah. But the family does not have to go register the death. There is, right. you know, there's things that are different that mm-hmm. I was shocked. I think when I came to visit there to learn about that, there was such delays and, um, extended time periods that you have to maneuver around. And so that's why I think a lot of Americans are like, oh my gosh, she, she's had to have been embalmed. Yeah. It's like, no, especially with the, the lead lining. I mean, she is sealed in there. So whatever's happening with her body in there, whether her body was treated, embalmed, whatever is she's contained that that smells not coming out. Nothing's going to come out because of that. Mm, Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people, a couple of things about the coffin, they were like, well, how much does it weigh if it's got this lead lining? And from what I could tell, it was like six to 700 pounds. I mean, she weighs probably, you know, 70 pounds at most. She's such a little thing. Yeah. Um, but it does take a lot of people that's lead is heavy. And so the interior of that coffin is super heavy, which is why those you know, people are all having to work together as many of them as possible to carry her. That's it. Yeah, that's it. And I think it, it does, it looks um, so lovely as well when the, the four, the, the uh, bearer party, there's four and then there's four the other side. And, you know, it does look, I think, no matter what coffin it was or, or who it was, that that looks, you know, it looks lovely and, and very traditional and in their uniforms and mm-hmm. it, it looks, yeah, it looks good. I think it was when she was leaving Scotland and, um, you know, they were all kilted and I was like, well, I want eight kilted men carrying me when I die. I'm going to put that yeah. on my list, but all I could think was, oh my gosh, how many times in the last 24 hours has that group of men had to practice that maneuver? Yeah. Practice their steps, practice everything because they knew it would be viewed in such a worldwide Worldwide. moment. Billions. Yeah, that's it. So at at the moment, um, uh, so in the early hours of the morning in like London, by, by where the funeral procession is going to go, they have rehearsals. So all the roads are closed and then the rehearsals take place and you can see there's some photographs online of um, the bearer party carrying a coffin, a black with a black drape and they, they've got their uniform on and they're, they're practicing and they're just obviously making sure that every step is in line and they're all doing it, all doing it correct. A bit like what we do as well. We, the, our men practice all the time. <laughs> Yeah. to get it just right yeah it's pretty amazing I think of the the royal family and how they really can't even begin any grief process during this because I imagine they have handlers handling their every motion every movement you have King Charles having had to go through his whole coronation in the moments literally after hi your mom is dead 
let's go kind yeah. of thing and having to, to do all these motions that there's really not a lot of time for them to process and to sit back and to just think about what, you know, how their family hierarchy has changed mm. in a lot of ways. Yeah. So the, he had, so he has to go round, King Charles has to go round to, um, to, he has to go to the to Wales, he's been to Scotland, he has to go to Northern Ireland where he's already been, um, to um, the parliament have to then sort of welcome him and, you know, he has to sign the thing to say that, you know, I'm your king and, you know, I'm in charge now. But I think yesterday he had, a 24 hour period of reflection. So they gave him a 24 hour period of reflection uh, where he went back to his high grove estate for for that that period. And then today he was back out. Um, He went to Wales today. So, and then tonight I believe is going to be another vigil around her coffin Mm -hmm. at um, Westminster Palace. So her children will will do it, followed by her grandchildren for fifteen mm. minutes. So it's it's hard because you can see it in their faces. You can see, you know, the the grief and the sadness, and everyone's watching them. And there's cameras, and it, it must just be so difficult. But yeah, once the the ten days are, are over and the and the, the and the burials taken place, I think that's when they'll have their, their grieving, actual grieving process will, will begin. Yeah. I'd, I would want to wear like my black sweatpants and throw on a, you know, baseball cap and not yeah. deal with any of the, yeah. the, the, the stuff going around. I would want to just go and be sad and have my, they moment. have to go. They've been going to, so Windsor Castle, um, San Genum. So they've been going there as well. So Kate and William, um, now Prince and Princess of Wales, have been going there and, you know, thanking people for coming out, talking to people, talking to babies, talking to children, you know, having having conversations, having a little bit of a, um, a joke with the public that, that have come out as well. But it's difficult I know what, what you mean when you say, oh, that's what you, you would want, want to do, but they are the royal family. It's their, their duty. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're trained to, to do this. So it's, you know, in their DNA, it's what is expected of them. So, so yeah, and I think people, us public, appreciate it and, you know, understand that, you know, they're going through through it, but it's it's lovely to know that they've come out and they're talking to people and yeah it's it's lovely are you gonna go try and see her lane and state well they've closed the queue at the moment okay so (laughs) um it's 15 miles long at the moment so they've closed it and now there's a queue for the queue so you have to get in the queue to then get in the actual oh queue. Oh my gosh! Um, so so yeah, I think um, personally no, but can understand why people do. Can understand why people do. My husband is a black cab driver, so a black taxi driver in London, and he um, picked up um, an American guy from um, Lambeth Bridge on Wednesday, and he was going back to his hotel when he was getting showered and and changed. He was number 19 in the queue. So he had started queuing at sort of two o'clock in the morning before it had even opened. Um, And my husband was talking to him and he said, oh, so you live in London then? Like how long have you lived in London? And he said, no, I am, I live in America. I have, when I heard the news, I got the first flight and came straight to London. So it's just, it's, it's unbelievable the amount of people that are from the UK, but also just from other countries as well that have, that have joined the queue and they want to pay their respects and they want to see her and, and feel at peace. I think it will make them feel at peace as well. So, so yeah, but it's a big queue. 
So no. So is it literally just standing in line or can you get on and register to have a sp spot in line? Like yeah, so I think when, thing? You, when you join, they give you a wristband and it has, has a number on. So if you needed to go have a comfort break or get something to eat, um, you, you're able to do that and then you're right, then we'll be allowed back into the oh, queue. Wow. So, yeah, and I think um, from sort of what everything that we've been seeing on, on the news and on the TV, a lot of people have made friends in the queue and along the way and they're saving the spot for each other while the other one runs and gets the coffees and, and coming mm -hmm. back. And, yeah, make people make forming friendships, I guess through that so. that's some of the news just some of the people i mean they've got picnic bags they've got everything they're like we we are prepared for 24 to 36 hours of being yeah. there. i mean these i can't imagine waiting in line that long to do much of anything uh, um it sounds you know like a terrible i just think it but, means so much to people it really yeah. does so you know and it, it's a lot of people it, it's a lot of sort of ex-servicemen and ex uh, service people and ex-police um, officers because they have served the Queen. So in theory, she was their boss, I suppose. She was yeah. their, you know, so it's, they, they, they look at her like a colleague or, you know, an, an actual friend. So they do feel that it is important to do that. And I understand, I, I do get it. I, I agree, I probably wouldn't stand in line for 30 hours, but I, I, I do then understand why people do do it, yeah. Well, and that she has been queen for so many generations that are living right now. I mean, 70, was it 70 years, like 241 days or whatever the number is that she was queen. That's lifetimes. Yeah, it is, yeah, people. it is. And a lot of people were saying that they were uh, coronation babies. So when she was um, crowned, then nine months later, <laughs> they come along. So they were always oh told <laughs> that you are a coronation baby. So they feel a special connection to her as well. That's amazing. And, uh, yeah, a lot of them are there in the queue. And yeah, and they think of her as their their nan, their, their, their grandmother. So mm. yeah, that's, that's why they go. That's crazy. Like, Queen Elizabeth is coronated. We're so happy. We're going to make a baby tonight. And then, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I would have never, ever thought of that. But that's wild. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. A lot of coronation babies. Yeah. Because back then, I don't know whether there wasn't obviously that much more to do. So <laughs> <that's what laughs> true. True. Well, thank you so much for sharing with me. It's such a cool insight to talk to somebody, especially in the business there. I mean, you don't have any secrets that I can't find myself, which is such a bummer for many people. Sorry, guys, we can't tell you every insider thing, but um, a lot of things I have not even read in the news and things that you have shared. So I appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. So thanks guys for joining us. Thanks to Sarah at Uden and Sons Funeral Home. And I just say London proper. I mean, all the or surrounding London is where you guys are. And so um, thanks to them for letting Sarah have some time with me and we'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.